Hi, hi, hi. Welcome back to another episode of Art Talk. This time I have got another special uh, guest on the show. He is a publisher, a author, a scholar, and a judge. He has traveled up way around the globe to be here with us today. He is currently the serving judge of the National and the Supreme Courts of Papua New Guinea. He has written more than 10 books and is from Africa. Is a man of great wealth and experience. So it is my honor and privilege to bring him on the show. Please sit back, relax, and watch. You will definitely, I guarantee, you will definitely learn something from him. Thank you. Sir, thank you so much. Welcome to the show. Thank you, David. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for hosting me today. It's a nice uh, sunny day in Port Mosby. Yes. Uh, overlooking the rolling hills of Port Mosby. <laughs> what a beautiful place and what a beautiful day. My name is Wahile Betuel Ki Dingak. Wow. It's a, is it a, it's a bit long. Yeah, it's a very um, long name. <laughs> yes. I am, uh, I come from Botswana. Botswana, wow. Yes, Botswana is in southern Africa. Africa. So is it located next to like South Africa, yes, Lesotho, it, or yes, you it know? shares a border with South Africa, with Zimbabwe, okay. with Zambia and Namibia. Wow. So that is where I come from. I am currently a judge of the Supreme and National Courts of Papua New Guinea. Wow. I came here in 2018. 2018. Yes, that is okay. when I started being a judge here. Yeah. Yes. Uh, before then, I had been a judge in Botswana for oh. a cumulative period of 15 years. Wow, it was a um, judge in Botswana before coming here and yes. being a judge here yes. in Papua New Guinea. Yes. Okay, I very good. I cut my teeth a long time ago. Uh, it must have been in 2002 two thereabout when I was appointed as judge of the Labour Court in Botswana. Botswana. Okay. Otherwise called the Industrial Court. Okay. The Industrial Court in Botswana is a specialist court. Okay. It specializes only in employment law. And so I was appointed to that court. It is at the same level yes. as the High Court. It is a superior court. Okay. But it only focuses on employment law. Employment, oh, okay. So I was a judge of the industrial okay. court for about two years. Uh, thereafter, I was uh, then approached to join the high court I okay. in Botswana. This was in 2005 in December, I remember vividly. Okay. Now the high court is the equivalent of the national court here. National court, yes, okay. Yes, that is where I served uh, for 15 years. Okay. Prior to all that, going to the bench, I had been in legal practice for some years. Wow. And focusing mainly on constitutional and administrative law okay. and labor law. I see. And was also in the law faculty for a few years yes. uh, before I joined the bench. Okay. So that, that's my, my um, summary yes. in a nutshell about my background. If you want more on anything, I can give okay. you more details. I see. Oh, I see. Wow. We have got a judge here. He was a judge in his own country for many, many years, and he is now the judge of the National and the Supreme Court of Papua New Guinea. He had to travel halfway around the globe to be here in this beautiful uh, island nation of Papua New Guinea to serve the people of Papua New Guinea. Wow, what a privilege to have you serving on the bands here in Papua New Guinea. Thank you, David. Uh, okay, uh, now we will. Um, um, ask you about your scholarly work and I know you are not only a judge you are a published author you have published in many of these international journals so guys this guy is no ordinary man he is a judge a scholar a jurist and many things so he has written many things and then many books as well so we will ask him how does he find the time and how does he do that you know 
So, sir, tell us about your scholarly work, including the books yes. that you have written. Yes, my my journey to scholarship. Yes. Uh, possibly started in 1992, 1993. Okay. When I joined the University of Botswana as a lecturer, okay. focusing mainly on constitutional law, okay. administrative law, and human rights. That is what I taught for several years. Uh, thereafter, I was then um, asked to go and further my studies yes. at the premier African university yes. called the University of Cape Town. Wow. in South Africa. Yes. The University of Cape Town, as you may know by yes. simply googling it, yes. is one of the leading uh, universities yes. in Africa. Yes. So that is where I studied constitutional law, uh, but focusing more on election law and democracy. I see. And I did my PhD for close to four and a half years, yes. and then I graduated in 2000. Wow. So during the course of my lectureship yes. and during my PhD, yes. I wrote many pieces. I started developing interest in writing. I see. So I started writing books. My first ever book yes. was on administrative law. I see. Uh, it is now a textbook for law students at the University of Botswana. Okay. After that, I wrote a book called Key Aspects of the Constitutional Law of Botswana. Okay. Wow. And then I wrote a book on legal aspects of HIV and the law, yeah. a comparative perspective on South Africa and Botswana. Wow. And thereafter, I wrote another book on constitutionalism and the rule of law in Botswana. I see. Wow. And then I also wrote another book called The Key Aspects of Constitutional Law in Botswana. Wow. So my rating continued. And in the last five years, yes. I probably wrote about four or five books. <laughs> wow. Uh, one is called <clears throat> Lawyers. Okay. Lawyers simply speak to the to the professional ethics of the legal ethics. profession. I see. Uh, it is being sold widely here in PNG. Yes. yes. And I see from Amazon yes. that is one of the hottest selling books, okay. actually. Okay. Uh, it almost sells copies. I'm monitoring it. Yes. It almost sells copies. Is unbelievable. Of ten copies per day. Wow. On Amazon. Ten copies per yes, day. Per day. Selling ten copies uh, per day. Lawyers. Okay. I I discuss the etiquette, the the obligations as lawyers yes. to the court, and all those things. Yes. The next book which I wrote in the last five years. Yes. Is called. Um, in pursuit of justice now wow. in pursuit of justice okay. this is the in pursuit of justice, justice yes uh, published by marape uh, marapa publications wow uh, in png okay i am particularly proud of this book by the way yes because um it looks good it is, uh, it is. Opti the optics are good yes uh, the 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 topic uh, the yes. title is is interesting yes examining the intersection of philosophy politics and law yes and the layout is actually quite brilliant brilliant wow. um is one of the books i had actually expected yes is to sell more than lawyers yes given the content of it yes. it may only mean that david is not investing much <laughs> in, in marketing it and then uh, i also published yes. another book called judges judges yes i also published another book called um, Towards a People's Constitution in Botswana. And in Botswana. So, um, you have just, uh, you're mentioning a lot of books. Yes, so actually, yes. how many books uh, do you think you easily, have uh, published? Easily, easily over 10. 10 over 12. 10? Yes. A, over 10 I or 12. published 10 plus books. Yes. And this is one of his books which he has published in the last yes. five years. Yes. In Pursuit of Justice. Yes. Wow. And I, yes. one of the my memorable wide reasons yes. I'm very uh, also fond of this book yes. is that the foreword yes. is uh, by none other than uh, the Chief Justice of Papua New Guinea, Sir Gibama Gip Salika. Wow! Uh, it's uh, it's a very interesting foreword yes. where he captures the very essence of the book. Wow! Yes. So, like, um, you told and I just mentioned yes. the books. I've written several articles actually. Yes. One of my passions is the intersection of law and health. Yes, so I've written a lot about sexual reproductive health yes. issues, HIV, and the law, and uh, social determinants yes. of health. And all those issues are published uh, in, in many other journals across yes. the globe. Wow, yes. 
Okay, um, we have got uh, here a man of towering intelligence, experience, and he is not only a judge, but he's also a law teacher. He taught in several universities. Um, and now, are you still engaged in teaching? You are on like... Um, yes, now and then. Okay. I do. Yes. If I have so, a chance. Yes. Um, many, many years ago, I, yes. I was the... I used to be a, a visiting uh, lecturer at the Institute of Labor uh, Law in Rome, in Italy, yes. and um, uh, extraordinary law lecturer at the University of Pretoria, okay. uh, where I supervised uh, one or two PhD students. Oh, okay. Um, and then I'm currently associated with the James Cook University in uh, Australia. Yes, in oh, here, okay. here in Australia. Oh, okay. And um, I'm also an honorary professor of law at the University of Cape Town. Wow. Is a visiting fellow, a professor at James Cook University currently. He also was a visiting uh, professor in uh, Rome and then Pretoria University and is also a, a visiting uh, professor at um, Cape Town University. Yes. Right? Okay. So you can see he has got great wealth of experience. He has written a lot, and this is one of his latest books. It's um, uh, In Pursuit of Justice. I think uh, means he's approaching uh, the topic from a philosophical perspective, asking deep uh, questions uh, about why judges make uh, decisions or what's the meaning of law and all these things. He has addressed this in this book. So this is one of the interesting books, uh, plus many other books that he has uh, published. Uh, contact um, the numbers and uh, WhatsApp uh, number and uh, email contact on the screen to place order for your coffees, okay? Uh, so, like, uh, apart from these books, uh, when you first came to Papua New Guinea, like, what did you really expect to see in Papua New Guinea in terms of people, in terms of culture? That's a, that's a very interesting question. I I like starting to answer that question because it has been asked to ask many times. Yes. I like answering that question by saying, uh, um, revealing my ignorance. <laughs> and it is profound ignorance. Okay. Can you believe it that in 2016, 2017, 2017, yes, I didn't know there was a country called Papua New Guinea. Wow, before 2017, he didn't know about PNG. Yes, I okay. didn't. So how did you come to know about PNG? Then? So uh, this is how PNG came to my world, to my life. Yes. It was uh, like God sent, literally. Yes. Because I received a, a message from a friend in London okay. saying to me, Key, uh, uh, that is, everyone calls me Key. Key, okay. Um, Key, there is a vacancy in the Pacific in a country called Papua New Guinea. They are looking for an executive director of the Judicial Center okay. of Excellence. Yes. And I thought, given your academic background, you'd like yes. to go for that one. I said, where is that? He said, somewhere in the Pacific. I said, okay. Okay. I'll apply. I applied. Yes. Shortlisted. Invited for interview in Sydney. Okay. And in Sydney, uh, I was interviewed by a panel. Yes. That included the then Deputy Chief Justice. Okay. Uh, Chief Justice Salika. Yes. And Wow. I was confounded. Why? I had traveled half the globe. I'm now in Sydney. Yes. And among the panel is a, a gentleman, looks very humble and looks African. <laughs> and I said, my God, this is African. Everything about him was African. What do I mean? He. He was very settled in his demeanor. Okay. He he was humble. Yes. And he spoke in major terms. Yes. And I said, "Wow, where am I?" And, I left uh, Africa and back I home, and Africa, I expected and to. And I meet Africa in Australia. <laughs> and uh, so uh, so that was yes. some kind of shock. Yes. 
and later uh, I tried to study more, dig deeper, yes. and then uh, I, I, I discovered that uh, here in the Pacific, yes. um, that is where Salika uh, came from. Okay, very good. So you left Africa, came to Africa. Australia for an interview, mm -hmm. expecting to see like Asians or like some other kind of people, yes. only to find uh, like uh, Africans I Yes, I, I left Africa. <laughs> And landed in Africa. <laughs> well, so, so my kids used to ask me because they were they were anxious. Yes. Uh, what kind of people are they? I say, well, <laughs> they just look like you and me. Uh, <laughs> they say, how come? I said, I don't know. You may have to read a bit, I and see. I'm still reading about it. Yes. And I don't know how I continue to read this. The recent book I'm reading. Yes. Uh, is. Um, on philosophy and law, yes, by one of your luminaries here, and when I say luminaries, I I use that word with deep respect because he's such a luminary and a scholar, yes. and that is Chief Justice, former Chief Justice yes. here. Yes, what a scholar, yes. and what a man, yes. and what a judge. <laughs> Uh, he continued to inspire me. He has yes. also written countless books, by the way. And that's right. He's a uh, writer, yeah. You can read in Gia on evidence, in Gia on on. So I'm reading up his latest book that he launched uh, last year at the at University, the University yes. of PNG. And in one of his chapters, he tries to um, grapple with theories about the origins of people from PNG. Yes. But he does say in that book. That one thing is undeniable. I'm almost paraphrasing him. Yes. He says we bear a striking resemblance to Africans. And this gives credence to one of the theories that say our four forefathers in the generations past yes. came from Africa. And that must be true. <laughs> because you know what? I was in South Africa yeah. in 2018. Yes. And I walked into. Um, uh, Alexandria, yes. there is a place I I within Johannesburg, yes, yes. and walked into the shopping mall and started inquiring about all these items that were on display. Yes. And then the shop assistant came and uh, he asked me, Also, oh, are you new to South Africa? And I said, Yes, I'm new to South Africa. Yes. And uh, I asked him back, See if you can guess where exactly I am from. Yes. And he got up and said, you are from Botswana. <laughs> <laughs> and I told him, no, I'm not from Botswana. I am not from even uh, Africa too. So, and then he said, you must be from, uh, you must be African-American. Yeah. Maybe because hearing my accent, yeah. I don't know whether I sound like an <laughs> African-American or not. But then I got out the phone. I went to the map and uh, I showed him uh, that... Uh, I come from Papua New Guinea, a country not of Africa, not of Australia. Yeah. And he got a shock of his life and the next question he asked was this. So in Papua New Guinea, you know, you have people like us living in there. <laughs> well, we must be your cousins. So, <laughs> David, on that yes. one, you'll be yes. shocked with this. Yes. If we, were to, if we were together in South Africa at this particular moment, yes, and to ask anyone, who of these two, yes, <laughs> David or Key, comes from Botswana? They'll say you. Well, they said it <laughs> over me. Why? Mo my people of my pigmentation in yes. Africa um, come mainly from Eastern Africa. Oh, okay. So most people, yes. actually, invariably, yes. most of the time, think I'm from Kenya. Kenya. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Because of my pigmentation. Pigment. Yes. So Botswana and most of Southern Africa, yes. they are of your color, texture, and complexion. That's right. So if you are in in South Africa and Southern Africa, yes, between the two of us, yes, and say anyone asks who of this is from Botswana, you will uh, they will, they will um, say you. Well, that's, that's what that's what I saw. Yeah, that's yes. what I saw. Give in South uh, South Africa, yes. but, um, Botswana. Yes. Said I got a shock of my yes. life, and I replied him, well. Uh, sorry to say this, but you have some cousins yes. living in the uh, north of Australia. And, and, and uh, talking about that, that was good for me because yes. um, I settled my... <laughs>